All right. Yeah. Well, so my name is Roman Wilcox, and I am the owner of One Grub Community. My wife Adriana is usually right here, but <laughs> she's off picking up the kids, so she's the she's the second part of that. And yeah. You know, I look into healthy alternatives, healthy ways of eating. Mm -hmm. One of the things I noticed is that people recommend vegan mm -hmm. and drop the meat and go vegan. So I started looking into it. And El Paso doesn't have a lot of vegan places to go. Oh, so before One Grub, it's been, uh, it, it was a lot tougher to, to find stuff to eat. Just in general, even uh, like sprouts and stuff didn't have that much stuff. And uh, now they stock more things. But uh, Roman is our, where we buy our groceries because uh, we believe that it's healthy. The stuff he makes, it's not processed or all that stuff. Uh, it's healthier and uh, you're supporting local. And, and we know the guy, so it's kind of cool. Uh, what I don't like about veganism at this point is that it's not completely mainstream. And so I find myself eating limited fare at most restaurants. Usually my creativity comes when I find someone like One Grub, Roman and Adrian at One Grub, or I make it myself. You know, like I have a, a teacher background and I, I did a lot of other stuff in the industry, but it wasn't really until I had found myself in this position with the Pay It Forward Cafe that I'd really decided that my food needed to mean something else besides just feeding. Uh, we wanted, I said, I need to make sure that I feed people and I'm giving them nutrition that they walk away with and they feel um, whether they can afford it or not. I'm just not the type of chef that wants to charge $60 for a veal chop anymore. Yeah. Uh, I never really was, but I didn't know that I, ha I could do anything else. Yeah. I thought that that's what I needed to do as a chef. I needed to make expensive plates, pretty plates, and feed a lot of people. But I realized I could take those skills and teach people how to grow their own food, cook their own food, feed them something really good, and, and kind of just take, when you take money off the table, yeah. um, so much more becomes important, yeah. like the quality of person and all that stuff, and and um, I, that's it. I like once I discovered that about myself, I was kind of ruined. So my name is Adriana Wilcox. I am a part owner with Roman uh, for One Grove Community and Plants for the People nonprofit. So we, um, I plan to have a lot of a lot more garden space that, than we do now. Um, plan to have different programs for educated education. Excuse me, is really intertwined into what we do. So we want to educate people on how to grow their own gardens. So you, people can come on Wednesdays to our garden days. We have a horticulturist on site that will. Um, teach everything from compost to harvesting to um, handling soil, handling pesticides, uh, excuse me, uh, pests without using pesticides because we're organic in practice. And these are true gardeners, folks. Yeah. <laughs> so, like the garden space, I'm really putting like a lot of effort. My hand is in the garden space quite a bit. Coming up with different programs like uh, becoming a USDA approved vendor that'll allow us to accept food benefits for locally sourced food and also for food that we make. We started, there was 
we were the we were actually the only food business that we knew of um, that had a complete vegan menu. Um, I know Roman was doing like some vegan items when he worked in the mustard seed, um, and that's where he kind of realized that there was an access issue um, for that type of diet. Uh, I like the way he cooks. I'm a very picky eater, and I just tried something that he made, and I kept trying random stuff, and I just love everything he makes. I was super excited when he opened the restaurant, and uh, we tried to go as much as we can. My fiance has a kind of an at-home bakery called Sane Vegan Treats, and she's been catering uh, for Roman, so they make cakes, and now Roman buys, I think, three of them a week. Well, One Grub has staples. You know, they uh, make it very easy for you to pick up something that you can prepare yourself at home and add a salad and you've got a complete meal. So there's not always uh, something that you can run into the grocery store and pick up something that you know is going to be tasty and good for you and follow the vegan diet. But with one grub, I know I can go and pick up something and literally walk out the door and dinner's made. Yeah. It's trying to be healthier and yeah. become vegan, but it's hard. Yeah, yeah. But their food makes it easy. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> What it all comes down to basically is food access, uh, community, and um, education. The plant-based food and the, the vegan food, um, not that it's secondary, it was just um, kind of like in us trying to create food access, we wanted to make sure that we were giving people the most um, beneficial food that we can give them. If somebody's gonna have just a single meal in a day, um, we want to make sure that it's the highest amount of nutrition and the best thing that's for them. So we wanted to make sure that food didn't have any cholesterol, any trans fats, and that it was just high in fiber, high in nutrition, that it was local when possible. So we decided to go plant-based. <laughs> and I was kind of like working my way up and I was also going to school because they were paying for my school. Um, but it really wasn't serving me. I think I was looking for something that, you know, gave back to the community and had more purpose. I wanted to be part of, you know, something that, that, uh, that serves our community. So um, when he started it up, uh, I kind of just decided to take the jump and, and I pulled out like a retirement, like an early retirement, <laughs> so that we could kind of get this started. And my wife had left her job with the city a month in of us doing this truck because it was doing really well and then so we were both kind of unemployed, didn't know what to do. And um, um, that was kind of scary. We got two kids, you know. Yeah. We're usually pretty, pretty, uh, stable and and so we had to think fast but thankfully the market coordinator at that time Valeria Venezia she's a she was like why don't you guys just sell some of your products that you would sell on your food truck we faced a lot of different obstacles um, throughout like the you know two and a half years we've been in business um, from you know losing the food truck to not having like a commercial kitchen to call our own um, and then only having uh, market on Saturdays can be really tough too. You know, as a business, you can only sell one day out of the, out of the week. You know, because you really have to like make that one day count. And it was just sell out week after week after week, and people were ready for this. So we started doing meals, and we started doing appetizers, and we started doing snacks, and we started doing and just played around for two years, kind of seeing what would work. And as it formed, we were we had a kitchen that we were working out of, a daycare kitchen that just was too small and wasn't working out, um, but it was working for the time being. So we were desperately looking for a space. When this space opened up, it was perfect, it was familiar, and we were actually working in here for a good solid six months or so, maybe even more, before we even opened up, um, just for a farmer's market. Yeah. And so now we're like on week six or week seven of dining room. Somebody's walking in, so I have to look back, okay? What's up? No, you're good. Welcome. Um, Miha, just take his order and I'll charge him later, okay? Sorry, guys. Um, was that really loud? I'm sorry. Uh, she's like, ah. Um, now, things change with us from one day to the next as we grow, and we've, I think it's been part of our success is the flexibility of just seeing what the needs of the community are and the needs of our business and just seeing how we can make it work. So that's the plan, is that we will convert this into the nonprofit diner. One Grub will continue to sell its market stuff, and we'll do our stuff to support it, 5% plus tips. We'll always go back into here. 
But the diner, you can actually come in and you can work in exchange for your meal. So we will have work in the gardens. Um, we'll do special like volunteers. If somebody really wants to get in the kitchen and they so, show some promise, we'll schedule them and do kind of like job training with them. And hopefully we can get on that boat where we're actually training people too. I have, I have like 24 years of cooking and like eight years of education and nonprofit work and I just, I don't want it just sitting in me. Yeah. You know what I mean? I want to share it. I love teaching. I love giving that to folks. So if somebody's willing to give their time to, to learn and to cook and to be a part of this, then I want to give them something. So if I can give them some skills, give them a good meal and just keep that access thing moving, we're in a good place, so. to go do we need to charge them come here real quick you guys don't mind do you yeah, no worries. you can step in we don't we don't have so we don't how are you so I have like little janky styrofoam cups that I'll give you we won't charge you for it but I don't have like proper lids and stuff is that okay can we can I take care of them for just real quick Young king with the rock star. We lit, we lit.